Welcome to this lecture series about complex numbers. In this lecture, we will define what is a complex number and discuss some basic arithmetic of them. So let's get started. A complex number is an ordered pair of real numbers. So that's the definition. By ordered pair, we mean things of this form, a comma b, where a is a real number and b is a real number. One can think of a complex number as an element of the Cartesian plane. Uh, basically, you have the x-axis and the y-axis. And a point a comma b can be thought of as a dot whose x coordinate is a and the y coordinate is b. Okay, uh, it is not clear as to why I call such a thing a number. It is a, if, if something is a number, you should be able to do some arithmetic with them. So we will get there. But for now, it's just a out of the nowhere definition. Given a complex number a comma b, we write or we define the real part of z as a, the, the, the x coordinate, and the imaginary part of z as the y coordinate. All right. And now we can actually define some arithmetic on them. So suppose z and w are two complex numbers. Then we define z plus w as coordinate wise addition. Okay, just add the x coordinates and the y coordinates and just put them in an ordered pair. Uh, the geometric interpretation is pretty clear. If you know some basic coordinate geometry, suppose this is z and this is w, then z plus w is nothing but the point obtained by applying the parallelogram law. So there is a point here which is obtained by, you know, completing this parallelogram. So that is z plus w. Okay, we define minus z as just the complex number obtained by taking negative, sorry, what am I writing? Negative of the individual coordinates. So if this is z, then minus z is the reflection of z about the origin. So that is minus z. And now let us look at some properties of this addition. So suppose z, w, and t are three complex numbers, then z plus w plus t. So here we are adding w and t first and then adding z. And here we are adding z and w first and then adding t. The three things are, uh, the two things are equal. And that's very easy to check. This is called associativity of, com uh, of, the, of addition of complex numbers. And this is just like what happens in reals. Okay, the second is either you add z and w in one order or in the other order, it's the same thing. This is called commutativity. Okay, again, <clears throat> familiar from real numbers. <clears throat> the third one says that this particular complex number, which is the origin, this does not disturb any other complex number under addition. So this just behaves like the number zero in, in the real context. So this is called the additive identity. Also, we just simply call it zero because it behaves like our familiar zero. Okay, uh, this one said z, uh, z minus z is zero. And what is z minus z? z minus z is shorthand for z plus minus z. So even in real numbers, when we write something like two minus three, what we really mean is two plus minus three, right? Minus three is the negative of three. So when we write that, we mean that, and it is immediate that this guy is zero comma zero. So again, this is all very, very similar to what happens in real numbers. Okay, lastly, if Z plus W is T, then Z is T minus W. Again, T minus W is that. And this is also immediate from our basic knowledge of real numbers. Okay, so there is some addition on complex numbers. There is also a product. So suppose that is a comma B and W is C comma D. These are two complex numbers. Then we define a product of Z and W in the following way. So Z times W is AC minus BD comma, comma BC plus AD. And this seems to come out of nowhere uh, and that's fine. Uh, I accept that it seems completely arbitrary. Why not just multiply coordinate wise? Why not just define it as AC comma BD? Well, the goal of uh, the construction of complex numbers is to be able to solve some algebraic equations which are not solvable in real numbers. So if you define coordinate wise multiplication, you'll see that it does not work out. There are other problems, but this is one of them. Okay, so just accept this definition for now. It will be more clear as to what is going on later. 
So here also we have some basic rules, some basic uh, laws that are satisfied. Z, W, and T be complex numbers, then again, we have associativity of product. Either multiply the last two things first or the first two things first, it's the same thing. So this is associativity of product. And uh, then we have commutativity of product, Z, W is W, Z. And now this guy behaves like the multiplicative identity, just like one in real numbers behaves like multiplicative identity, one times X is X for all real numbers X. This behaves like the multiplicative identity in the complex numbers, Z times that is Z for all Z. And you can just verify very easily via this formula. Right, uh, so this is called the, or I will call this the multiplicative identity. At least for this lecture, I will call this the multiplicative identity of complex numbers. Okay, this one is very nice. This is distributivity. The multiplication distributes over addition. Z times W plus T is Z W plus Z T. So when we write this, write this we, we are using the board mass rule. So we multiply first and then, then add. So that's, conven that's a convention that is inbuilt. Just like in real numbers, you know, this distribution happens in real numbers also. And this is another thing which reinforces the role of zero. If you multiply a real number with zero, you get zero and similar thing is happening in complex numbers. Okay, so these are some things that you can check easily. Okay. Now we define the magnitude or the modulus of a complex number Z. Let's say it is equal to A comma B. Then this is the notation for the magnitude and this is the definition. The geometric interpretation is very clear. If we have the complex number A comma B, then basically the distance from the origin is what is we are talking about. Just apply the Pythagoras theorem. A squared plus B squared is the square of the hypotenuse. Okay, so that's uh, just a definition. And now let us do some examples, at least two examples. So let's compute this product. So this product is A times A minus B times minus B. And then we have B times A plus A times minus B, which is equal to A squared plus B squared comma zero. So something like the square of the modulus, or rather exactly the square of the modulus of this guy or that guy is popping up here. This is no accident. We will get more feeling for these things later, but for now, this is just some computation. And now here is a question. So suppose we have some complex number Z equal to A comma B. We are asking what is one by, one by Z. Now what does it even mean to say one by Z? What we are really asking is, can we find a complex number w such that zw is this. Note that this was playing the role of the multiplicative identity. So one by z is a complex number w such that this happens. Just like in real numbers, if suppose you have a complex number x such that two x equals one, we write x equals one by two. I'm asking for the exact same question. Clearly this is not possible if z is zero, meaning z is zero comma zero. Then this is clearly not possible because this would then be zero comma zero. Um, just like in real numbers, you cannot invert zero. There is no real number x such that zero comma x is zero times x is one. So we may assume, or rather we will assume that z is non-zero. That is a or b is non-zero. At least one of them is non-zero. Okay. So <clears throat> can we find such a complex number? And indeed we can just define W as a divided by a square upon a square plus b square comma that. So if you take W equals to this, and this is legitimate because this uh, is a non-zero real number. So if you just compute ZW, you will get it is equal to one comma zero. Uh, and you can take a cue from this computation. It is more or less the same computation with this extra thing floating around in the denominator. That is what is canceling this guy off. Okay, so you can invert every non-zero complex number again, just like real numbers. Okay. And now let us make an observation. A comma zero plus B comma zero is a plus b comma zero and a comma zero times 
b comma 0 if you compute this this will be a b comma 0 so the point is the addition and the multiplication they are both happening exactly like real numbers except for this extra decoration that we have to do so if we had two real numbers a and b and we wanted to multiply them well we could just multiply them or we could create these fancy complex numbers multiply them as complex numbers and extract the real part and same for addition so the point of this is that there is a copy of real numbers sitting inside complex numbers which you know preserves the arithmetic of real numbers and that copy is nothing but the x-axis so the x-axis here can be thought, sorry the x-axis here can be thought of as a copy of real numbers sitting inside the complex numbers okay so complex numbers extend real numbers basically that is what I am trying to say and now finally this equation is solvable in complex numbers so when we write this equation what we really mean by by one we mean the multiplicative identity of complex numbers so z square plus 1 comma 0 has a solution has a complex solution why is that because 0 comma 1 square is 0 comma 1 times 0 comma 1 and if you compute this this is equal to um, 0 times 0 minus 1 times 1 comma 0 times 1 plus 1 times 0 so this is minus 1 comma 0 and therefore 0 comma 1 square plus 1 comma 0 is 0 comma 0 which one can uh, just you know not one can I mean this this shows that this equation or rather this polynomial expression has a solution namely 0 comma 1 if you substitute 0 comma 1 in place of z you get 0 and therefore this polynomial equation which was not solvable in real numbers is now solvable in complex numbers and the fundamental theorem of algebra says that actually any polynomial with complex coefficients has a complex solution this I will state more precisely or more properly later but for now I'll just say it in words and of course that is not true for real numbers because this polynomial has no real solution even though the coefficients are coming from real numbers so with this I want to end this lecture as usual like comment share subscribe and I'll see you next time